Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Estuaries Improve Water Quality? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Estuary and Coastal and Shelf Science, published in March 2023. Research conducted by Dunia Rios Yunis, Justin Tiano, Dick Van Ovelen, and others from the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Estuaries are very special. They act like a natural filter that helps clean the water before it enters the ocean. But we don't fully understand how this works and how the processes change throughout the year. So, for a whole year, we took samples from various sites along the Western Schelt Estuary. It's a restored estuary that used to be very polluted. The samples were taken from freshwater, marine water, and brackish water. We analyzed them for several nutrients. We wanted to check how the concentration of nutrients changes in different seasons. Thankfully, our results show that the Western Schelt Estuary is healthy. We discovered that each section of water works differently as a filter. We also found out that temperature is a very important factor in how they work. Introduction. Do you know what an estuary is? It's where the river meets the ocean. It's very special because fresh water mixes with salty marine water. This creates a unique environment where many different organisms can live. A lot of estuaries help clean the water by trapping pollutants and excess nutrients, just like natural filters. This is why it's very important to protect them. But many estuaries are in danger. We change their habitats when building dams. We also pollute the land and the water we use. When we grow crops, we increase the amounts of nutrients that go into estuaries. This may sound good, but it actually leads to eutrophication. Small plants called algae thrive when there are too many nutrients. They grow very quickly and cover the surface of the water. When they die, they fall to the bottom and start to decompose. This takes a lot of oxygen. But when this happens, there's not enough oxygen for other plants and animals, so they get sick or die. And climate change affects these ecosystems too. Many countries have started to restore estuaries. This may include controlling the nutrients from farms, creating new habitats, or removing dams. We wanted to see if these measures helped to improve the water quality. We also wanted to find out how a restored estuary works. What processes occur there? Do they change in different seasons? How does the salt in the water impact them? Here in the photo, you can see the Western Schelt Estuary in the Netherlands. In the foreground is water, and in the background, you can see the sun over the land. Methods. To answer these questions, we took samples from the Western Schelt Estuary. It used to be very polluted, but several countries have worked to restore it. The river starts in France, flows through Belgium and the Netherlands, and finally meets the North Sea. The estuary is like a funnel, narrow at the beginning and wider at the end. We took samples for a whole year from different sites, where the water is fresh, where the water is mostly salt water, marine, and where the water is a mix of fresh and salt water. This is called brackish water. We took samples from the water and also from the sediment on the estuary shore. We incubated part of the samples to simulate real life conditions. We looked for various chemical compounds like ammonium, nitrates, nitrites, and phosphates. These nutrients are vital for many plants and animals. We wanted to know what amount of nutrients the sediment exchanges, takes in, or releases. We tested the water's salinity, how salty it was, at each site during each month of the year. We also measured the temperature and oxygen levels each month. Figure 1. Taking sediment samples from the brackish site of the estuary's shore. 
You can see two researchers standing in the sediment. They have yellow buckets and a variety of sampling instruments around them. Results. The salinity of the water stayed the same throughout the year at all sites, but the temperature changed with the seasons. The concentration of most of the nutrients depended on these temperature changes. The salinity also affected the nutrients concentrations. For example, ammonium in the fresh water was high in the winter, but in the marine water, it was high during the summer. Oxygen exchange rates were highest in the summer, especially at the marine site. Overall, the concentration of nutrients was much higher in the fresh water. Then it started to decrease towards the ocean. So how do sediments exchange various nutrients at these different sites? On average each year, the freshwater site took in more nitrogen and phosphorus than it released. The brackish site took in more nitrogen but released more phosphorus. And the marine site released more nitrogen and phosphorus than it took in. The sediments at the marine and brackish sites were great at remineralizing carbon. Plus, sediments removed 11% of the total nitrogen that had entered the estuary. They also removed 15% of the phosphorus. In figure 2, you can see the exchange rates of oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus in the marine, brackish, and freshwater sites. Upward pointed arrows indicate the nutrients released by the sediment, while downward pointed arrows indicate nutrients taken in by the sediment. The dashed line in the figure represents the water sediment interface. You can see marine sites on the right and freshwater sites on the left, with brackish water sites in the middle. Orange arrows represent oxygen, purple arrows represent nitrogen, and yellow arrows represent phosphorus. Looking at the figure, where are the highest oxygen exchange rates? Discussion. The estuary restoration efforts have been worth it. The estuary used to be very polluted, but now there is no eutrophication. The oxygen levels are not low either. But what happens at each site of the estuary? The river washes down water rich in pollutants, nutrients, and organic matter. Then comes the estuary. The first part of the estuary, the freshwater, traps a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus. The brackish and marine sites also trap many nutrients, since they cover a larger area. And they are great at breaking down organic matter. The high oxygen exchange rates there show levels of high microbial activity. The warmer it gets, the quicker they break the organic matter down. This is important as climate change warms the earth. We can use this information to better predict what could happen in these unique environments in the future. Conclusion You can see now that estuaries are very special. There may not be one where you live, but research some estuaries in nearby regions. What is their condition? How can we help? Remember that it is humans who pollute estuaries. Here are a few ideas. Dispose of household, for example, cooking oil, soaps, and yard chemicals, for example, fertilizers or pesticides, properly. Avoid using toxic pesticides in your garden. Try using natural treatments instead. Or, reduce your waste by using reusable water bottles and food containers. This reduces the amount of trash going to landfills, as well as the amount of litter in natural areas. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.